Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist DT from weatherist.com, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. It's time to talk about This Week in Weather. And in this particular edition of This Week in Weather, we'll be talking about the cold blast coming up here, fairly significant cold shot, November 10, 11, 12, for the eastern half of the country. The cold pattern won't last, but... Hey, it's November. And what do you expect? You, you know, if it stays cold all the time, that's called um, January. There you go. It's not November. Uh, let's talk about the La Nina pattern, uh, the update on that. Also, a pattern of returning colder in December. The CFS is trending colder for the winter as well. And a, a final look at the Siberian snow numbers. So let's get right to it. See what we can figure out here. This, by the way, is a view of how warm October was from uh, one of the uh, climate centers, I think from the Southeast uh, Regional Climate Center, which is one of the really good ones. And uh, you can see that uh, a lot of areas, um, let me call my mark here, Southeast right there, Southeast Regional Climate Center. And look at these ones. That too stands for the warmest, second warmest ever, first ever warmest, record warm here. You know, Richmond is the fifth warmest. You know, Southern New Jersey, one, two, three, four. New York City was in the top five. New England, many places in New England, uh, number one, so on and so forth. Bo, so it was a very, very warm November. Uh, I mean, like October. So uh, now let's take a look at the current pattern here. This is what's going to happen here as of November 9th. So we are getting a bit of a pattern amplification here. Uh, with this uh, first, uh, there's our uh, a big upper trough here and another piece of energy here. Now, if these two features were to form, it would form a big low here, but that's not going to happen. So we don't have to worry about that. But in any event, we can clearly see that those two pieces of energy are going to have a partial phase, and that will establish a fairly deep trough over the U.S. Uh, there's an upper low here off the coast of the Pacific Northwest, and here's our Alaska Ridge, still quite strong right there. So it's not a, a, a pattern-changing um, event, but it is going to be a blast of cold air which will be nice to see if you like winter weather. Now, this is the European Ensemble uh, valid here for uh, Thursday night or Friday morning. And you can clearly see the pattern beginning to phase here. This The one piece of the jet here, the other piece is here. And there's your upper low. We have a bit of a ridge over Texas and Mexico. And uh, look at the flow here. Look at this coming down. You see how it drops in like this? There's our cold shot. Very impressive. Nice, good flow coming in this way. But it doesn't last very long. So uh, let's enjoy it while we can. Get the fireplaces, beef stew cooking, the muffins in the oven, that sort of thing. Here's the surface map for uh, uh, Friday morning, uh, uh, November 10th. And uh, you can clearly see the uh, high is right here. Um, we have one, the one big low with the cold front has moved through here. And you can see the howling, the very strong north winds. Look at these north winds coming in like this, folks. This is going to be pretty gusty. Probably some lake effect snows here. Probably snow showers in the Appalachians in western Pennsylvania, western Maryland. And then Saturday morning, we can see the, the big high sitting over uh, eastern Ontario, moving into New York State right here. Very impressive. Still again, the winds. Now, the winds have dropped off here in Virginia, North Carolina, which should allow for maximum radiational cooling. Take a look at our temperature anomalies. This is at 850. You can really see how cold it is here. Uh, relative to normal for early and mid-May, uh, that purple stuff is minus 11, minus 13 degrees below normal. So this is a cold blast. There's no doubt about that. Now, the... Uh, the, uh, the Sunday uh, European model here this afternoon was showing temperatures. Let's take a look for this coming Saturday. This is as of November 11th, okay? So um, we can see some of these temperatures in here. I got my mark up. When Richmond gets down to 25, oops, uh, yeah, 25 degrees here. And, uh, and you can see some other places, uh, very impressive. Um, uh, let's see here, 20 in the Shenandoah Valley. Again, teens in the Greenbrier Valley, perhaps low 20s here. Northwest North Carolina, southwest Virginia, all in the low 20s. Even along the coast, it gets down into the you know, interior below freezing. Uh, Delmarva, upper 20s, D.C., mid 20s. So it's, it's a cold. And look at these max temperatures on Saturday. 40s? Are you kidding me for the high? It's a cold day coming up. If your max temperatures in Virginia, Maryland, West Virginia, the Delmarva, even in central North Carolina, if you're staying in the 40s with no snow on the ground in November, that's a cold air mass, boys and girls. Now, this is Sunday. Same sort of thing. Look how cold these temperatures are. It stays in the 30s in most of the Shenandoah Valley and in eastern portions of West Virginia, Western Maryland, all day on Sunday. Uh, uh, November, I guess this would be uh, Sunday, November 12th, yeah. 
so it is a it is a cold a cold uh, weekend coming up here so uh enjoy it now this is what happens afterwards the high moves off the coast i get my marker out here so you can see it the high is right here it's moving off the coast you get a little bit of weight developing here and now we get some rain in here i've been asked a couple of questions is there any frozen precipitation coming in here no i don't i don't see that at all um I really don't. I suppose it's maybe it's possible if it comes in Sunday night, but I just don't see it. The winds are already out of the southeast, bringing in the warm air. And remember, the ocean water temperatures are still very warm here, so I just don't. I just don't see it as a threat. And then, of course, that low moves off the coast. It brings rain on Monday night into New England, New York, New York City, New Jersey. So this could be a decent rain event. Uh, you know, the models may actually increase this a little bit here over the next uh, 24 hours. Now, what happens beyond this? Here's day 10. This is the operational European here. And we can see huge upper low here in southwest Canada. This is a lot of cold air in here. This is just brutal stuff in here. But all the cold air is in here. And uh, we have a bit of a short wave moving through Minnesota, Wisconsin. Could bring a snowstorm there. Here's our big ridge in Alaska. So when the ridge is here, that produces your mean trough here. Okay. So let me clear this out. You can see this again. When the ridge is here, that produces your mean trough here. That's what it comes out to. Now, uh, and again, also you look at the NAO up here. This is still uh, strongly uh, positive up in here, so on and so forth. So it's not a great, like I said, the pattern, the jets coming in for the Pacific Ocean. This is a classic November La Nina pattern. There's no doubt about it. And uh, the ensemble bean shows that as well. You can clearly see the strong negative anomaly. You see the green there over the British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest. That's where your trough is. And that produces a bit of a ridge. You can see the ridge here. Over the southeast, over the eastern United States, just like this, there's your trough and here's your ridge. So uh, it's it's not a super warm pattern, but it's definitely not a cold one. And this takes us up to uh, valid through November 15th. Now we go beyond it. You can see uh, these are temperature anomalies. This is the surface temperature, two meters above the ground, six, seven feet above the ground. And you can see it's warm over the Midwest and the East Coast. If you look at those anomalies, uh, it's not super warm. You know, minus one, you know, plus one, plus two all up in this area it's not super super warm but it's not cold meanwhile the cold air in northwest canada continues to build up now we look at it beyond this is 360 hours not much has changed this takes us close to thanksgiving november 20th and you can see the uh, trough is still here now we are getting some height rises here in greenland that's interesting to see so that indicates a possible shift in the pattern because that forces the trough to come here and indeed the heights are beginning to drop a little bit we're no longer getting this we're getting this so that indicates the, the pattern may be beginning to change and we are seeing that uh there's the cold air the bleeding notice is bleeding into new england and virginia november 20th we're actually at a couple of degrees perhaps below normal uh, again this is 850 temperatures but maybe we'll as getting a little cooler out at long terms this is the hemispheric view looking down from the north pole and again we can see interesting feature here here's our polar vortex right here beginning to get a height rise here and here and here so maybe the pattern is showing signs of changing as we approach thanksgiving now the european weekly from last friday look what it's doing here this takes us into the first week of december and uh, we have uh, some uh, changes going on the pattern bit of a ridge developing here there's our possible negative neo developing here getting get of a bit of a trough developing here nothing too extreme but as we go on into the pattern look you can see the cooler temperatures on december 7th across the midwest into new england down to virginia north carolina and then look at this by december 14th this is a fairly cold looking map for mid-december not brutally cold not record cold but it's cold and you can see clearly um again we're getting some sort of a positive anomaly here bit of a ridge here and a bit of a trough here and we clear it out and we can see the temperatures remaining pretty chilly out into mid-december now let's take a look at the la nina here for a second so like i said december by mid early mid-december looks like it's going to be getting a little colder than what people originally thought now let's take a look at the L -L -L la nina here the blue line which i'm going to highlight here this is the cfs this is let me show you what this piece of shit is doing here look at this thing look how cold it is you compare this the yellow line is the mean so the CFS is way colder than anything else. So it's, you know, you can, it's just whatever. And this latest run of the CFS is still doing it. It's way colder than anybody else. It has it down to a degree, which is La Nina by January, as you can see here. And then it begins to weaken it. So that by the time you come out of the winter into the spring, it's a non-event. 
but only the CFS is this cold. It, that's just the way it is. And if you look at the actual data, here is a region 1.2. Again, this is from Levi Cohen and Tropical Tidbits. Now you can see one, region 1.2, one, which is by South America, is cold. I mean, it's down by 2 degrees uh, centigrade below normal. But the other regions, this is 3.4. Remember, this is the official region which is used to describe El Nino or La Nina. It's a 3.4 region. And you can see here it's barely a degree. It reached its peak, and now it's coming up a little bit. So that's interesting. And then if we go to 4, it's actually gone above 0. So yeah, I'm not convinced about this La Nina going to be a big deal here, folks. I really remain skeptical. Now, this is as of October 27th. This was the CFS for December. Look how warm it was. Okay? Really, really warm here over all the Midwest, the Plain States. Now, this was, again, October 27th. And if you look at January, we see this. This is the IRI map here for the winter. Their latest forecast, December, January, February. And they're actually fairly cold. This is one of the colder maps I've seen that they've produced here. That's actually a below normal. Normally, you don't see that from the IRI folks at all. Uh, the, the precipitation is dry over the south. We know that. Typical La Nina. Now, this here, again, is October 27th. This is for January. And again, a lot of cold in Canada, warm over the eastern U.S. Okay, we know that. Now, look what happens here. This is November 6th, the latest CFS. Suddenly, January is colder. You can see it. And uh, this is February. And this is uh, March. <laughs> so it definitely is trending colder. Now, let's take a look at the, uh, the snow for Siberia. So this here is the uh, Siberian snow cover. Now, this is as of October 31st, 2017. This is last year. As you can clearly see, the snow is significantly heavier here and heavier here. So the SAI, which is the Snow Advance Index, was higher last year and it's lower this year. Okay, and that argue that would argue for a stronger polar vortex, which means for a weaker uh, or a more mild winter. But and we can, but if you look at the snow cover extent, we want to look at the black line. Okay, see right here the black line, and you can see that it plateaued here a little bit, and then we filled it finished above normal. So that means the SC, the uh, the SCE, the snow cover extent in Siberia, is up. Not the same thing. So what does that mean? Now we can see the snow advance index, like I said, is below normal a little bit, not dramatically so, but it is below normal. Right here, you can see it. So this is the snow advance index. So there's two things here. Okay, there's the S, the snow cover extent in Siberia, and the way the snow advanced. Snow SAI, two different measures, and they do not agree. They are opposites. They are in polar opposites with each other, and you can see if you compare it to SEC over the last uh, since 19, for last several years since 1980, I guess the last 40 years or so, you can see that this year we finished. This is the zero line here. We did finish significantly above normal for the SEC, SCE. Yeah. Now, the last time the SCE and the SAI were opposite each other was October 2013. Now, December 2013 was a mild, then it turned very cold in the central and eastern U.S. in January 2014, February, and that should read March, sorry about that, March 2014. So, also was a winter forecast to be a weak La Nina, and that forecast also fell apart. So, the uh, Arctic Oscillation stayed neutral. But in that winter, the polar vortex came south into central and eastern Canada, which suppressed the southeast ridge, but it allowed the NAO, the North American Oscillation, the Greenland block, to go negative. This resulted in several Midwest snowstorms and East Coast snowstorms. The, the, this term here, again, if you're not familiar with this term, that stands for significant East Coast snowstorm, sex, or sexy. So anyway. Now let's take a look at December. You can see how, again, it was quite cold on the north, as you can see up in here, on December 2013, but warm over the southeastern U.S. And then look at, this is February. My God, it was cold. Did I skip January? Yeah, now it's December. Let's have it out of water. That's, you can see February. That's January, very cold east of the Mississippi River. And this is March. The winter just kept going and going and going. So, that's where we stand right now. Am I saying that this winter is going to be like 13, 14? No, but I am concerned 
um, that people just automatically assume that because the SAI is actually a little below normal and it means we're going to be stuck with a super strong polar vortex, which I don't think is going to be the case. And I think the uh, Arctic Oscillation for the winter will be close to um, uh, neutral. But that will come southward at times, the vortex, which will allow the polar vort the NAO to go negative. So that could set up for some interesting winter weather conditions. So I'm just, I also see the La Nina breaking down in the latter half of the winter. So um, that with that negative QBO, I'm just more bullish than everybody else. I'm not super bullish. I'm not forecasting a severely cold winter or a lot of snow. But right now, the vast consensus of everybody is for a mild winter. And I'm just not there. You know, so if I'm going for a normal winter and everyone else is going for a mild winter, well, yeah, that makes me on the outlier. But on the for my actual winter forecast, which you'll see in the mid-November update, is not for an extremely cold or severely cold winter or a lot of snow. It's just colder than what a lot of people are forecasting. That's all. This is meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll see you soon.